In this video, we will make a perspective section uh, similar to these examples. We're going to make it um, very simple black and white line drawing without any color. That way we can really focus in on the line hierarchy and um, some of the other elements that go into the drawing. I think it's important to get a good understanding for how to make this very uh, clean and simple black and white drawing. Uh, before you hop into adding a bunch of color and trying to render it. So we'll start out with the SketchUp model. And because we're going to be taking this drawing into Illustrator as a vector drawing, opposed to Photoshop as a rasterized image, um, it's really important that we have control over how everything in our file is layered. Um, so we're going to layer it based on essentially the line hierarchy that we're going to apply in Illustrator. So we want like all of our furniture on a layer. We want um, all the trees on one layer. We want the building on one layer. And then even like down to the pattern that I have on the ground for the path, all of that needs to be separated so that once we get into Illustrator, um, we have control over it. And because we can't do a true um, layer export from SketchUp to Illustrator, we just have to do a little work around, um, and that's just essentially doing color by layer and then exporting the line work um, based on the colors. So to do this, we're um, just like um, any other time, we're going to change our style to the hidden line style. And then in our layers panel, we'll just click color by layer and then go up to the edit tab in styles and then the edge, edge settings. And then we change the color to by material. The next change I'll make in the style settings is just changing the section cut to white. And then the section cut lines are fine at black, but we want to bring them down to um, a thickness of one so that um, it's consistent with the rest of the model. We'll change this once we get into Illustrator. So you can see I already have the section cut where I want it to go. Just to save some time, I already set up a scene um, that's going to position us to exactly what I want to export. And this is pretty much ready um, to export in Illustrator. But before we do that, I, I know for a fact that I'm going to be placing um, people in Illustrator. And sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to place uh, people accurately because this is a perspective drawing. So a trick that I like to do is um, kind of make a reference line. And so this line that I drew is, uh, I think it was five feet, five inches tall. So, you know, a typical height for a person. And then I'm just going to um, place them all over my model without um, worrying too much about where I do it. I just kind of want um, a sense of the reference, um, kind of anywhere where I could be placing a person. So now we're ready to go and export this to Illustrator. Um, before I do it, though, I want to turn on my profile lines, just like always. And now um, we're going to do the first export, and I'm just going to name it People Height because uh, we're just going to use this to pull out the lines that I use for the people height references. So now I'm going to turn that layer off and just export another one. And this is kind of our base file, but I'm going to name it uh, lines trees because the next one I'm going to do is going to be without the trees. And I'll show you um, why we do this later. But essentially it's so that I can give my trees a little bit of transparency because I want to see what's happening behind them. The next export I'll do is the shadows. And I notice that I need to place a face where this window is so that I can get some shadows to cast on it. The reason why I don't have anything there right now is because um, if you're exporting a PDF from SketchUp, it won't read the lines behind a transparent object. So just for the shadows export, I want to add a face there so I can get a shadow to um, be on that window. And this, instead of a PDF, we'll do a JPEG for the shadows and we'll just scale it in over our Illustrator file. The last export is going to be ambient occlusion render. And I'm using the ambient occlusion plugin from Fluid Interactive. But you can obviously do this with um, uh, many other rendering plugins like V-Ray. And I'm going to plug in the exact same resolution as uh, my shadow export. That way I know this will be the same ratio as my other drawings. Now we can go into Illustrator and open up all the images we exported. 
And the first thing I'm going to do is overlay the shadow and ambient occlusion renders on top of my lines export that doesn't have trees because this is kind of going to be my base file. I don't want the trees because I'm going to add that in separately so that I have control over the opacity of them. So here you can see I'm just scaling the shadows and ambient occlusion images on top of this. And I know that it'll line up perfectly because they're the same aspect ratio. Now I'll just go into the appearance settings for each of the images and change their opacities to multiply. And then I'll actually uh, make them a little bit more transparent, uh, just temporarily. I'll come back later and uh, make it a little bit more exact to what I want it to be. Now we will separate all of our lines from SketchUp. So you can see I'm um, making new layers in Illustrator. Each of these layers are um, the exact same name of my layers in SketchUp. So like I said, this is kind of a workaround to not having a layers export from SketchUp, which is uh, sometimes annoying, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually uh, very easy to get around. So because we have the different colors, what we can do is select one of the uh, lines and then select same stroke color. And you can see I have this key bind to control E. So now I can very, very quickly go through, select each um, different line color, hit control E, and then click and drag it onto the layer um, where it belongs. And you can see as I move the lines onto their correct layers, I just hide them. That way I know what I have left and I don't get confused. So once you get all your lines separated onto the correct layers, we can go ahead and select all the lines and then change their color to black. And we'll also give them a temporary thickness, typically just a, a nice and thin line weight. That way we know exactly what we're working with. And then we're gonna add in the trees. So I'm gonna open up the file exported that does include the trees. So in this file, just like I did before, I'm gonna select the lines from some of the trees and then select all the same color lines and move them onto their own layer so I can isolate them from the rest of my um, model. And now because these three trees here are in front of some of my uh, geometry I wanna show that they have some opacity to them. So you can see I'm, I'm making them uh, closed loops so I can use my live paint bucket tool and just quickly fill in these shapes so that I, in my master file, I can um, add opacity to them. So once we use our live paint bucket tool, we have to go to live paint, expand, and then ungroup. And now I can select only the fill by the same color, copy it, delete it, paste it in place, and now it's on its own separate layer. So now I'll copy both the fill and the tree lines, and I will paste them in place into my master file. Notice for this, I turned on paste remembers layers. That way I don't have to separate these again. And I'm also using a cool trick in Illustrator because you can't make a true group. I just dragged both of these layers on top of my perspective trees layer so that now um, they kind of become a group and I can turn them on and off with just the perspective trees layer. And I moved the trees layer all the way up to the top because I know I want them, I want it to be in front of um, my building geometry lines. So this is starting to look a lot better. Now I can go ahead and start managing all my line weights. And I'm going to speed this part up because this probably uh, takes the longest, especially if it's the first time you're making a drawing like this, because you really have to feel out which lines you want to be lighter, which lines should be heavier. Um, but just like any other drawing, the more times you do it, the better handle you have on um, kind of the spectrum of line height or line weights that you need to be using. And it's also you'll you'll start to develop just kind of an eye for like what this needs to look like, which is another really cool thing about working in Illustrator because it's, you know, it's real time feedback of what your drawing is actually going to look like opposed to if you're an AutoCAD and you don't have your line weights on. So this is also where um, the cleaner your model is, the easier it is to do this stuff. So like you can see here, this bed has a whole bunch of unnecessary lines because it was 
um, complicated geometry. And this could actually easily be fixed in the SketchUp model just by simplifying um, that actual bed component. But um, for me, sometimes I, I just like to get it into Illustrator and then do uh, quick fixes like I'm doing now, even to like this uh, ceiling fan and some of these lines that are missing on the walls. The key to being efficient in cleaning up drawings in Illustrator is really understanding the, the size of the image that your end product is gonna be. For this, I'm, I'm kind of thinking it's gonna be about 11 by 17. So a lot of the detail that I'm doing or cleaning up here may not even be noticed. So you kind of have to cut yourself off at a point um, and just understand that what you're doing may not even make a difference. Next, we can work on our section cut. So we'll start by just doing a simple outline all the way around um, the pieces that we're cutting through. And we're gonna use this outline for um, the backdrop of the section cut. So a white fill, the pochet, the pattern itself, and then also the outline. So I'll move the section cut fill layer towards the top because we want it in front of everything. And I'll make a new layer called section cut outline and I'll use uh, the lines that I already drew and I'll just copy them, paste them in place, move them up to the uh, cut outline layer. And I can change my cut fill to just a solid white color. So now you can see it's blocking out all the unwanted lines that were there before. Now we can make another layer called suction cut poche. So this will actually be the actual diagonal hatch pattern that I put on there. And just like I did for the trees, I'll make a layer called section cut, drag these into it. So now I have them all grouped. For the hatch pattern, I have a diagonal hatch that I saved from one of my other drawings. So I'll just copy this in and then copy the fill, the section fill layer, paste it in place, move it onto um, the section cut poche layer. And then I'll just use the eyedropper tool and switch that uh, cut fill to that texture pattern. Next, I'll add a layer called section cut glass, and this is just gonna um, be super quick, add some thickness to where that glass is being cut because before it was too thin. Now I'll add a building outline layer, and this isn't gonna be as thick as my section cut lines, but I do wanna add a profile to the entire project just so it, um, it kind of pops out more then the trees and the people, once I put them on there, we want the building to be uh, the strongest element of the drawing. Next, I'll really quickly um, add a couple of glass layers and I'm just gonna simply draw some shapes over where the glass is. And even though it's kind of faking it, I just wanna show that there is a little bit of opacity here um, to um, symbolize that glass transparency. And then I'll add this etch pattern to all of my windows, just as another um, layer of understanding for it being glass. And using the same strategy as the glass, I want this uh, neighboring wall of my site to show that it actually has, or it's a solid piece. So I'm just gonna add a white fill and then lower the opacity so that we can still see what's going on behind it. Next, I'll um, turn on my tree layers, my shadows layer, and um, start to adjust these closer to what I want them to look like for the finished drawing, along with the ambient occlusion layer. And once again, this is just kind of a back and forth, um, adjusting them and really trying to find what works best. Here I notice I forgot, I missed um, some of the walls that I'm cutting through these interior partitions. So just real quick, um, Back on my section cut layers, I'm just adding the outline, I'm adding the pochet, and I'm adding that white filled backdrop. Once again, it's important when you're working in Illustrator to not be zoomed in so close all the time. You wanna take some time, zoom out, take a look at your drawing, and you'll notice some things that you need to fix sometimes that you may not notice if you're zoomed in. So now we're ready to add in the people. So I'll open up that uh, people height export that I did from SketchUp. I'm gonna select just the people height references and then paste them onto a new layer in the master file. So this is simply a reference layer. We won't um, be showing this in the final, final drawing. So we don't have to worry about um, deleting any of these lines. We can just hide it whenever we export. 
now I'll make my people layer and I'll copy in a bunch of um, silhouette people. And now you'll realize how useful those reference lines are because you can quickly populate uh, your drawing without having to worry about um, getting the right scale to people. And you can do this for any type of drawing. It can be a, a Photoshop rendering. It can be any anytime you export a rendering from one of your 3D modeling programs, you can always place uh, these reference lines as a pass just, so, just for uh, placing entourage. So you may have noticed as I'm placing some of these, I'm actually going to need to come back and mask out or trim parts of the people because in some places their bodies should be hidden by the floor or the bed or whatever. So to do this, all you have to do is draw shape over the part of the person that you want to hide. Click both the person and the shape, hold down Alt and click the minus front option in your Pathfinder tab. And that's just going to mask out the part of the person that you drew the shape over. And you can always go back in later and double click into the group and delete out that mask if you still, if you want to get your full person back. The next thing I want to do is add in my vegetation. So I'll make a new layer and then I'll copy in some uh, outlines of a couple bushes, some grass, and just really quickly without thinking too much about it, um, populate some of these garden beds and some of the areas on my um, pathway. Now I want to add a shadow to all of my people. To do this, we're going to use Photoshop. And this is a really good example of how you can use Illustrator and Photoshop um, ne right next to each other. You can probably add shadows to them in Illustrator, but for me, this, this way is um, much quicker and comfortable. So to do this, I just save my Illustrator file as a PDF, open it in Photoshop, um, paint a, a white background, add a new layer, and for this new layer, I'm just gonna use a, a brush that kind of fades away. And I'm just gonna really quickly draw in like the shadows that are going in the same direction as the shadows on my building. And as you can see, this is like super loose. I'm not spending much time on this because in the end, uh, the accuracy doesn't really matter. It'll still give that effect. So now I'll make a layer in Illustrator called People Shadows, and I'll just make sure it's right behind my People layer. And then I'll literally just drag that layer that I made in Photoshop into my Illustrator file. And because I saved it as a PDF, it, it's going to be the right scale and everything. So all I have to do is align it and then go to my appearance options for that uh, image and then make it on multiply and then adjust the opacity. And now I have um, those shadows for my people, which just adds you know, uh, an extra level of depth. As a nice little finishing touch, I'll just add a couple birds to the top here. And really, um, even though this is like a, a really small example, this is the type of thing that starts to give your drawings life, right? The people, the trees, the plants, even the birds. And just like that, we have our completed perspective section drawing. I really hope this video gave you a better understanding of the workflow. Um, from SketchUp to Illustrator to make a drawing like this. And I hope you can put your own unique twist on these steps to make um, some really cool drawings. Thanks for watching.